Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Kite Man. Hell yes, yeah, season one, episode nine. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. We're immediately picking up of the in the aftermath of last episode, and Kite Man and Glider have to decide what they're going to do about the briefcase, considering nothing can destroy it. And I love that even being freed from it, Glider's still like, no, 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 maybe I should hold on to it, you know, just to be safe. But Glider, Kite Man's like, well, I don't want any power after being beast mode, so it's not going to have any effect on me, so I should grab it. And so he holds on to it. They eventually steal a vehicle, but it wasn't like the vehicle they were going for. He ends up stealing a tr uh, chicken truck, and he's like, yeah, just like every kid's dream to drive like a, a, a large... Uh, 16-wheeler, you know, with chickens into it. And, like, once again, just the fact is he can be such a little kid sometimes. Even though, like, the way he does things does seem to annoy Glider, but she still loves him regardless. Because even though she's telling him, like, oh, like, not everything needs, like, a one-lighter pun type of thing to it, but she still does it throughout the episode. He's like, see? Some situations do call for it. So, once again, still two peas in a pod type of situation. So, the... The... Briefcase is in the back of the truck with the chickens and one chicken becomes like the supreme leader chicken and he at least kills one of the chickens and reigns supreme and being like yo this is mine and he basically turns into a giant kaiju just as Kite Man was talking about yo we need a kaiju or Godzilla to show up to devour this thing or something because maybe that's how we end up destroying it. I also love that they had they didn't have any money because Kite Man tipped at uh, Frank's uh, hotel, and it's like, they sold us out, he's like, yeah, but those people work off tips, it's like, that was Frank's decision, you can't blame every other employee that works there, even though we never really got to see any other employee, I mean, to be fair, it's like, none of that's going to fully compensate Frank's place from being literally nuked, so, granted, if any of his employees survived, he survived, but we don't know if there was anyone else, you know, so, it, it, I see, I see Kite Man's standpoint. You, you might not like the organization as a whole, but why should you punish the individual people who have nothing to do with Frank's decision? Nevertheless, I love the whole selling the eggs thing and Kite Man just being so horrible at haggling. He's like, oh, these, these eggs, oh, they're priceless. The guy's like, okay. He's like, I'll sell them to you for like $5. I'll give you a dime for each one. He's like, ha, huh, sucker. And it's like, oh, God, Kite Man, you're so bad at this. But your, your earnestness is... So pitiful, yet also so sweet and encouraging. So, at the same time, this is all going down. Dark Side has finally made his way back to Earth. Like I said, he hasn't been here since episode two. I'm curious what made him decide to come back. Now, I guess the the anti life equation being activated more than once. I guess he can't actually track it, which I he knows it's somewhere on the planet, but I guess it emits such an energy where you can tell on where in the solar system is and know what planet it's on. Well, no, because to be fair, it's like, I, I take that back. He didn't actually, he actually doesn't know how to track the uh, anti-life equation at all, which is so interesting to think about. Because the only reason why he came to Earth is because it's the anniversary of Malice's parents' death because he, in fact, killed her parents. So, because initially I was thinking like maybe... Uh, Dark Side was her dad, but I think it came up previously like, oh, her parents are dead. But it's like, oh, Dark Side's the one that killed them. And it's like, oh, that typical thing of like, oh, I killed your parents and I adopt you, which is all mega fucked up. I say that typically, but like that has come up in something else and I just can't remember what. There's some examples that are floating in my head and I just can't remember what exactly is. But like, that is an effed up thing, but I feel like there's some other story that has done that where it's like, oh, I'm gonna adopt you even though I'm the one that... Oh! Well... Spoilers? Umbrella Academy did that. I don't know if it's a thing in the comics, but it, they definitely did it in the TV show. You know, I'll, I'll keep it like that. But it's like, yeah. Because I, 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 I knew there was at least one example I was thinking of. And it's like, yeah, that, that was one. So that's a real effed up situation. And also him to celebrate it. Because I guess it's like, yeah, the day I murdered your parents is the day you became my goddaughter. Well, I guess she was already your goddaughter, but 
her parents lie to you, so you murdered them. So I think it's actually sweet about Malice that despite not liking this job initially, she's actually grown attached to being here. And it's like, well, we don't really know what her relationship was like with Darkseid. Before. Well, he murdered your parents, so you're always going to have like an awkward relationship with him. But yeah, he showed up because he wants her to uh, start serving him on Apocalypse now. And she's like, no, 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 um, you know, oh, like I got to give my two weeks notice. So making excuses because she actually does like it here. And in fact, when the time came that, it, you know, Six Pack let it slip that Glider and Kite Man are looking for the anti-life equation or trying to escape with it. She's like, no, 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 no. It's Lex and Helen that have the anti-life equation. And it's like, oh, you wouldn't lie to me. She's like, what? No, lying's so not in fashion. And then she's like, crap, I lied to him about something he actually cares about. I am fucked. Which begs the question, like, if she lied about something he didn't care about, would he care as much? Probably still would, because, you know, dark side's still dark side. Which I love that despite his beef with it, he still keeps his choir around, which he has to constantly tell them to shut up. It's like, they kept saying, it's dark side. And he's like, okay, they get it. I also love when they, like, corrected him. They were like, actually, it's nuclear. And he's like, shut the fuck up. What's it? It's something exceptional hearing the words shut the fuck up come from Keith David's voice. It's It hits different hearing it come from Keith David. Um, also, speaking of voices, I was listening. I was like, ah, oh, that's definitely and sadly not Lance Reddick. And so I was like, ah. Oh. And I looked at uh, the credits. It's not Lance Reddick. I'm pretty sure... Cause I would have, I feel like I would have noticed it last episode if it wasn't, but I'm pretty sure it was Lance last episode too. So I don't know when they voice stuff, when they record the voicing for episode uh, an animated thing. I don't know if they actually do it in chronological order. I'm actually really curious because you know, like when you're making movies and TV shows, they're not always filmed in chronological order. A lot of times they would. I mean, even when you're filming the episode or something, you're like, oh, we're going to work on episode two, but it's like they might do the ending first type. You know, so I, I don't know. You know, if that works. So I'm curious to see if it's going to be the same voice actor who voiced him in this episode, voicing him in the season finale, or will it be Lance's voice again? Like, did he like voice like episode nine, but maybe not? Ep I mean, voice episode 10, but not nine, or is it the same dude? Because that might mean like, sadly, this is around the time he passed, so he never had time to, you know, record uh, this episode. It just, it just kind of like hearing the voice be different. I was like, yeah, Lance must have passed around this time. Because it like, oh. it's like that same gut feeling I had when I saw him make a cameo in season two of Bosch Legacy. And, spoilers, pops up at the end of the Percy Jackson show. I was like, ah, oh, rip Lance Reddick. Ah, oh, dad. I, I, I'm actually, but it's also nice because I'm getting a lot more Lance Reddick, you know, set, um, you know, uh, post him passing than I would have ever thought. I never would have thought like I'd see him pop up in some of the stuff he has. It's just a sad reminder that we won't be getting him in any of these properties I've mentioned previously again in the future. But tinges and all that aside. Dark side is basically taking over from uh, where Lex and Helen who failed to get the uh, briefcase. He's like taking over and it's like, yeah, it's finally going to be mine conquering the universe, yada, yada, yada. Helen was able to secure him, specifically Apocalypse, doing business with uh, Villigan. So it works out for her. And you have Lex being like, oh, yeah, like, we kowtow to you. You you, you, were, you got this. And the reason why he was fine with it, because it's like, right, all we have to do is get the briefcase first. And the moment we do, I'll have more power to take down, um, take down, oh, God, what's his face? Uh, dark side. We also found out why Lex waited so long because it's like, you're the one that had it underneath some chicken nuggets in a freezer at a trappy bar. Why'd you wait so long to use it or whatever if you knew exactly like if you hit it there, like why'd you wait? And he's like, because I was waiting for Superman's birthday. I was like, man like his, I mean, once again it's true to the character's like psychotic obsession with Superman, but I love, obviously gets played up for laughs in this, especially like Harley Quinn season 4, the way the lengths he went to go to to go up against, deal with Superman um, well we also know his, his weird fetish when it comes to Superman but yeah, it's just like, yeah, I was waiting for his birthday to kill him. Like, <laughs> that's wild. But yeah, so that's why he never pulled the trigger on it. I like that just being the in-universe reason for why he waited so long. And got, I gotta wait for his birthday to kill him for it to be so poetic, you know? So, which is, always, which is also interesting to know that, like, oh, 
does the world know Superman's birthday or is that just something Lex knows which is so interesting because I'm like well you have access to so much information so I don't think he knows Superman is Clark Kent in his universe. I think some universe, some it depends on a series or, or run or whatever. I'm sure some, there's got to be some out there just like Joker sometimes knows that Bruce is Batman. So I'm sure the same thing in the uh, Lex case as well. But my point was like, how would you know about Superman unless Superman put that out publicly? I'm like, oh, this is my, my birthday is X, Y, and Z. You know, so either way. His big old plan was taking everyone at Noonan's hostage and that wasn't going to, he thought he used that to convince Glider and Kite Man to give him the briefcase. But it's like, no, that's all a moot point because everyone in the bar fights bad. Freaking Noonan is like, oh, let me show you how we handle things in World War One. And some of the goons are like, how fucking old is this dude? And they proceed to get murked. They're doing their thing. Six Pack is helping out a little bit. The Queen of Fables. I always forget, is it Mo or Joe? I think it's Mo, but I could be misremembering. I love that he's beating the guy. He's like, where's my fucking money? And, and Noonan's like, whoa, he owes you money? He's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, uh, you know, old habits. I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, and even Gus handling himself a little bit, uh, you know. I mean, I guess you got to learn how to defend yourself to some extent. I, I, I'd like to imagine it's because he's used to wrangling in kids, you know, because he's a teacher. You kind of forget that from time to time, considering he's hanging out at a super villain bar. But, well, villain bar, let's not go so hard uh, and say super villain, but villain bar, that um, you just, I, it almost feel like the way he was dealing with them felt like kind of how he would deal with kids, like especially like wrapping them up at the end there. Uh, but nevertheless, at the same time, Bane and Goldilocks continue to be so cute. Even in fact is he has three different lollipops because he knew it was like, oh, this one you won't like, this one you'll like, this one will be just right. Is it, is it? And I never thought about that. Does she have her own weird OCD? Like, if you want to, like, break it down, I'm like, does Goldilocks have a version of OCD where it's just like, no, like, no matter what, it always has to be the thirds. It's not like it actually does taste better or it's just right. Maybe it is, or maybe it's just like a no, it always, the third thing will always be just right because she has some causality thing to make the third thing always right. Am I overthinking this? Yes, but just like the fact that you just happen to have three lollipops and the third one just happens to be just right, that she just happens to taste them in the right order to get to that makes me think like, no, it has to be a psychological thing of every third thing has to be just right. Once again, I, I didn't even think about that much last episode, but it really kind of racked my brain when I thought that, saw that this episode. Either way, I love that he's telling her she wants to hear a love story, one without kissing, yucky. He's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you a love story with no kissing or eye contact. And he basically uses his story with Rebecca as the centerfold of it, which she actually really started really liking. In fact, some nearby parents out with their children start like actually going to be like, oh my God, like keep telling the story. And I love that it's like, oh yeah, and Rebecca got sent back in time. It's like, oh, but what about her daughter? You mean like, he's like, oh, you mean Golden Glider? What about her? It's like, yeah, but she's running away with the anti-life equation. Like who's going to help rescue them? He's like, well, that side of the story hasn't been written yet. I was like, I love how meta that is because that's all happening. So he doesn't know the resolution to that story yet because even at that point in the episode, that part of the story hadn't like finished yet it was still ongoing because they had to call in malice for help but we'll get to that in a second the moment bang goes in there to help everyone um in the bar and stuff like that and she has to go use the bathroom i was like no don't send her and she doesn't know how to read the the tape that says do not enter she says oh it's a donut bathroom and goes in there and bang realizes after the showdown being like oh crap and goes in there and they're like oh i'm the worst babysitter that story did not go the way i knew something f was going to happen because of the whole goldilocks i was like there's no way bane is going to be happy also, you have a girlfriend and here you are lamenting about this love story. You have Rebecca who never loved you. There's, you have Betty. Once again, are we going to, I brought it up previously. I'm like, are we just going to like, you're going to like ignore Betty, even though Betty's like super into you. Maybe until you like, I, I don't know, man. Not less like, it's just like, I have, I'm just telling this story, but I really have moved on. It's like, I need to see him with Betty for more than one episode at a time. Because it's probably, are we going to be like months later before we see him with Betty again type of thing? 
It's going to be interesting, too, considering, like, well, Goldilocks knows the story from what Bane said, and so her going to see Rebecca. And I love that that played some role in Bane's life where she's like, this is too wrong, this is too wrong, this is just right when it comes to his love life or something. I don't know. Like, I, that's been my million-dollar question of what Rebecca's story is because we haven't seen that for the past, what was it, three episodes ago she got uh, Glider, like, let her use the toilet and got sent back in time. We don't know what, I mean, there hasn't been anything present day that's changed. So I don't know like how the time travel rules work in this. Like, did it splinter off and create an alternate timeline? And it's like, well, because in this case, you're like, well, it's been a loop of, well, your mom's been alive the entire time. You just didn't know it because she hadn't, she never died because Bane and Kite Man come back and you come back in time and end up saving her life. It always is meant to happen like that. Or, you know, so, that would kind of prove that it, there is no like, oh, it doesn't automatically splinter on an alternate timeline. So she hasn't done anything that's had a major impact on present day. Not unless they're saving, saving that for the, the stinger of the season finale of like, oh, and things have massively changed. I wonder, well, we already did like a things time causing massive changes because of, I was like, wasn't that like... Because there was time travel involved in season four of Harley Quinn. So, either way. Along with all of that going down, we have the chi the mutated kaiju chicken going on a massive killing spree. I was like, so many people dead. That poor guy being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't order the eggs. I didn't even eat them. I got the wrong order. Got his head bit off. It's like, and then there's like the couples on the Ferris wheel. Uh... It's like, oh, like, oh, like, fine, I will, um, one, like, it was a younger couple, and then an older couple, and then the next, it's like a lesbian couple being like, fine, I'll go vegan for you, and then the chicken's like, you'll be spared for now. Um, makes you almost wonder, is that why it beat up Cheshire even more? Because Malice was like, oh, Cheshire went vegan. I actually thought that was going to be a one-sided slaughter. The chicken whooping Cheshire's ass kind of surprised me. I actually felt bad. I was like, oh, the poor bastard got, like, like severely messed up. To be fair, it's like, well, the chicken's got the anti-life equation on its side, so. Luckily, they were able to, like, get the, uh, they made the chicken spit it out. It got returned to a normal size, and then Cheshire ended up ripping, and, and ended up eating the chicken. I was like, ah, that feels poetic. I was like, there's no way after all the death and destruction you caused that you get to walk away clean. It's like, yeah, Cheshire got its get back by eating you. So I was like, ah, you kind of feel bad, but it's like, yeah, you were power tripping at the time and murdered a lot of people. We kind of let it slide. The fact is, Glider does that, but you're, you're different, you know? <laughs> it's, it's different when you're a chicken that we have no association with. So so it's bad when you do it. We kind of let it slide when Glider did it. So, But yeah, all this death and destruction was caused by one chicken. Now, if you let someone like Darkseid or Helen or Lex get their hands on it, it's game over. So they still don't have a solution on how to actually get rid of the anti-life equation. But Darkseid now knows that uh, the side popping up being like, yo... Uh, you got that tracker inside of Cheshire because you need to track down Malice because obviously she lied to you. And I love the whole thing of like, yeah, who was that pet store owner? And they're like, Brandon. He's like, Brandon, right? He's like, yeah, they're so like always up in your grill. Essentially, he's like, what was the lines he was saying? Basically, like, oh, you always have to watch out for like people like that trying to sell you crap and trying to be pushy for uh, you to uh, buy stuff like that. But it works out in the end because now they'll find... Cheshire and use that to go after Malice because he's like yeah she's not going to go back to Noonan's because that's too uh she's too smart he's like yeah she's a genius like me she takes after me so she won't go back to Noonan so we're gonna have to track Cheshire to find her and to find out where the anti-life equation is to find out where um Kite Man and Glider are so it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us the next episode in fact being the season finale so how does this all play out? How does this wrap up? How do you deal with the anti-life equation? Oh yeah, I also forgot about um, the Queen of Fables. She went inside her book because her fables started trying to unionize. Specifically, Hansel tried to do it and then she killed Hansel. So I was like, oh, that sucks. And it was all for naught because like, well, it, it needed to get dealt with regardless. Uh, but it also shows you kind of like the slave labor she's kind of got going on. 
But it's like, oh, the moment she uh, comes back out, it's like, oh, everything at the bar was dealt with. Oh, well, I guess, like, I kind of killed Hansel for nothing. But once again, that need, it was either going to be now or later. That was always going to need to be dealt with. Because eventually she would have called for the fables and they wouldn't have shown up. So, I, I wonder if it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, once the fable's dead, there's no coming back. It seems like that's the case. So I don't know if she could, it's even possible for her to resurrect Hansel or he's perma-dead. So... We'll see if there continues to ever be any more revolts uh, from the fables. I highly doubt it. Like, I think she put the fear of God in them now. So uh, they will never make the mistake again of wanting better rights and better working conditions. <laughs> How dare you? You know, so we'll, we'll see if anything comes from that in the future. But like I said, they're scared to death now. So I highly doubt it. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where all of this takes us. The Rebecca storyline, which now coincides with the Goldilocks storyline and everything with the uh, with Dark Side and Malice and the um, the uh, Anti Life Equation and Helen and Lex. Like, what is the end result of this uh, season going to be? How is this all going to wrap up? How is it going to conclude? You know, there's going to be a stinger. Like I said, I wonder if the time travel stuff is going to be the stinger or will there be some other stinger? I also hope it doesn't end up being like a sad thing of like either Kite Man or Glider dies because the whole like, oh, like no matter what happens, we're in this together almost felt like a, I almost halfway expected something to happen. Or like whatever happens, I doubt either one of them is going to be perma dead, but I think it's going to be like a, one of you is going to die and you're going to have to resurrect the other. Like I think the other person is going to have to resurrect them. I feel like this will be kind of with the story be. But like one through line I'm pretty sure is probably going to come through is Glider's going to finally learn how to control her ability in some shape or form. And maybe her full, like, fully control of her power allows her to destroy the anti-life equation or do something that makes it so no one can get it. I, I don't know, but it, like, it feels like this is the perfect time and setup for that to come into play. Just don't know in what necessary capacity... Uh, her full controlling her powers will under what circumstances and what the end result will be and you know, i'm interested to see where season finale leaves us but i've done enough running my mouth to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye